Hello and welcome to the third edition of Telford Steam Railway Roundup. Thank you for joining us. We're outside here on a cool and what could be progressively a windy and rainy uh, January day. But yeah, we're here. And even though it's a closed season, there's still lots and lots of things that are going on. So come with us and see what's going on. So here we are back in the old locust shed with Dave. Hello. Again, Dave, I had, so you're going to give us uh, an update on what's left of rocket because yes. it looks a lot different doesn't it, it from does. when we last looked at it um yeah um as we all know it's due it's 10 yearly boiler overhaul yeah. um the boiler has to be removed from the frames and set away for a thorough inspection and a retube we are not far off that position now where we're able to lift the boiler um got a couple more bits to remove in the smoke box which is where we've been working this morning hence we're all sort of a bit grubby um yeah once the boiler is lifted, which we hope to be within the next week or so, depending on when our boiler smith can accept it onto his site, the frames will be towed outside. We'll swap it then with 5619 to get yep. it over the pit for its washout yep. prior to getting that back into service this year. But um, yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting <laughs> to say it like this, isn't it? We, you know, obviously the chimney's gone, the water tank's the cab. But the big difference is when the, the lagging has come off, yes. hasn't it? You know, off the, um, off the boiler. You can see the bags of the lagging there. It's a silicon based um, insulator, which is much better than the old, the old fashioned stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's really it. Uh, so, what you see now is what we're left with. Yeah. So, um, once the boiler is gone, we can concentrate on the frames and the motion and. Um, give that any necessary servicing and yeah. repairs that it needs. But you've, you've worked, it, it's been a, a, a hard job, hasn't it? A big job, but you've done really, really well, the volunteers. Yes, you know, getting hard. Getting into this stage, isn't it? A lot of it didn't want to come apart. <laughs> <laughs> now so there's a surprise, it's, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. put up a fight at times, but it we've has. got there. So yeah, last few bits to do yeah. now. And, uh, and we've just, I mean, it was new to me. So today we've taken the concrete and the fire and the bricks out and the yes. sand, haven't we? That was, that yeah. was a, a new experience for me, absolutely. Yes. So it's, like you say, it's a good way of learning how a steam yeah. tool is assembled. Yes, absolutely. And what it involves. But as, yes, it's a dirty job, isn't it? Because some, <laughs> someone's got to do it. <laughs> exactly. And Dave, we're yes. very grateful for you and the volunteers yeah. for doing that. So yeah, there we go. lovely. Thank you very much, Dave. Pleasure. Thank you. So, Dave and myself, we've just moved to the side to, to Rocket for the, the big reveal for this episode because, Dave, fantastic news. We've we got have a, a tram boiler. Tram boiler. So yep. this is, it's come secondhand to us, isn't it? But it hasn't been used before. It's basically, yes, it's secondhand, but it's never been steamed, as that we're aware of. Um, originally designed for a steam boat, um, which, which the project never really came to fruition. Um, ideal for what we want really um, as you see it's been prepared for its um, examination by our um, boiler inspector um, normally it'll have nice wooden cladding on it which has been removed all the metal sheeting you see around here now will come off it and then we're left with the boiler shell once the cladding underneath is removed so yeah it's basically a new boiler um, which really is going to be ideal for it the is, tram. isn't it? It couldn't, couldn't be better for, yeah. for, for our tram, isn't it? So, you know, we're really grateful for all our volunteers, all the GoFundMe uh, people who have donated to help bring this to the railway. We couldn't have done it without your help, so thank you ever so much for that. And it's just exciting to know that it this is. is progressing, the tram is progressing, and, you know, we can get it fitted in, yeah. and it's just going to be brilliant. Okay. So that's the, uh, at the, the bottom there is the firebox fire door box. on the ash There's pan, the firebox, yeah. little tiny thing compared to the 56 yeah. and the uh, rocket. It's the ash pan. Um, you can see the boiler tubes there. Um, yeah, so it, it's good that all the documentation certificates have all come with it, which are now with our boiler inspector. Um, so yeah, it's waiting for him to come in now and um, give us the thumbs up for it. Then it can be uh, the um, modifications to the tram body to, can be to made fit it to in, fit isn't it? it? Yes. And, and wasn't the original? Uh, boiler in the tram wasn't that didn't that have a maritime background to it I as well? believe yeah. that it was I mean yeah. they're all very similar boilers anyway yeah. um, but um, yes yeah, so but it's quite nice it's keeping that continuity yeah. with that isn't it yeah. so yeah 
Brilliant. There so as we go through this railway roundups, we will continue to match watch the progress of our tram. So yeah, absolutely fantastic that we've got a board. So there we are. Yeah, lovely. lovely. Cheers, Dave. Okay. Thank you ever so much. You. So we can't be in the shed here at Telfordstein Railway and not give you an update on 5619. So Dave, in the cab, what, have we, been, what have we been doing since uh, Polar with well, 56? We, we were very pleased with how the engine operated over Polar. Um, no issues at all. Um, we did have a few problems with the fire bars, which um, unfortunately got bent, so we've had to order a new set of bars. Um, so it's going to cost us a bob or two, but yeah. uh, we'll put out an appeal for that. Um, yeah, so really it's just it's routine maintenance now, um, cleaning. Um, once rockets removed from over the pit, it's going to have its boiler washed out um, and the frames cleaned and uh, general inspection ready for coming back into service. It, uh, Easter all being well. Yes, and, and, and 56 is our steam locomotive it that is, we plan to yeah. use, isn't it, this, this year? So, it's, yes. It's so, we'll be running heritage diesels and uh, Pacer units as well, but when there's a steam engine run, it will be 5619. And it did work perfectly, didn't it? It did, yeah. Polar. No, no problems no. all over the 30 odd days that we steamed it. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. very so, popular with, with our visitors, yeah. wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, so yeah. So, great. Well, we'll, we'll keep you. Uh, up to date with progress is going on but yes it will be in steam we hope it will be in steam uh, for our opening weekend at easter so march the 31st and 1st of april dave okay. thank you very thank much you. thank you so we're back outside and it's great to be with andrew in front of his 03 and andrew it'd be nice for you to give the viewers an update on the work that's been going on since we last spoke yeah since the last time we spoke it was polar wasn't it it was so yeah since then we've done like, quite a lot of work almost every weekend we've been doing a couple of little jobs tidying everything up since Polar, the big one we did was sit unseason all the bolts that mount the compressor because we wanted to check if it was the compressor holding the engine. Turns out the compressor's still spinning, so that's both a good and a bad thing, but the engine's still seized. So that's around that side, that was a bit of a pig to get to the bolts, but that's been sorted. Since then, it's been dragged outside. We've also done all the doors on the cab, as well as all the body panel doors, because they were all bent and half the locks were all seized. So we've had most of them all off to allow it to secure both the engine bay and the cab. So now the cab's secure and we've also put a cover over the, the roof, over the main actual roof hatch because the O3's have got a sliding sunroof. That unfortunately is leaking and I don't have the time at the moment to take that off and reseal it. So we've just put a temporary plastic cover over it. So that should yep. keep most of the water yep. out. At least make my floor last <laughs> a little bit longer because that's not in the best condition either. But with all the doors secure in the cab and both the engine bay, it'll keep most of the moisture out and also stop any... Uh, Anyone else getting in there, I don't really want in there. No, which is so which it's is improved good, the security. Yeah. Once the weather's warmed up and this wet weather's buggered off, we will hopefully look at stripping the engine because since while it was sat in the shed particularly, it was absolutely saturated in the bonnet. So it's not really the ideal time to start pulling heads off. So since well between now and then, what both my dad, my granddad and me have been doing, we've been going around oiling everything up, trying to free off all the manifolds. I know in the past two weeks or so. Granddad's managed to free off all the manifolds on the engine, which I'm surprised by. Yeah. Because they were, again, quite crusty. So that should mean then hopefully once the warm weather comes in about yep. April, March, we can literally crack on, manifolds off, heads yep. off, and it should be, uh, hopefully get it freed off within about a month, two months. It's going to be quite so, a big job. So yeah, it will be a big job, but you're doing the preparation, aren't you, for yes. like you say, with, by oiling everything up and things like that. Yeah, because I know in the past, when I spoke to your granddad, he was, they were oiling all the motion and greasing up to, to help, I suppose, with it moving in and out of the shed, wasn't yeah, it? Stuff? It keeps getting moved about, so that's the thing we've, I know another thing that's reminded me actually, all the axle pots have also been done as well, because this yep. is a bit like Jamo, and I think it's similar to a couple of other shunters. A bit like 56, they've got the oilers, which are like an axle pot yep. with uh, wicks in it. Yes. That just tops up the oil. They've all been cleaned out because two of them are full of water. But since then, the only other thing we've got to do is have the plugs out of the axle boxes and just have a quick check around the boxes. But yeah. when we've been moving it, nothing's been squeaking, which I'm amazed by. Well, that's unusual think, for yeah, how long it's been out in the open. Yeah, because it's you. been out in the open. I don't think it's had any oil since we actually came. Well, I say we, the North Norfolk came to move it. But thankfully, looking at photos that the book Alan's done, yes. there'll be more mention of that later. Um, it's actually been moved about quite a lot to North Norfolk, which I think is what stopped everything and season up. Yes. Thankfully, so that's a benefit because it's been up from Weybourne to the Holt at North Norfolk yeah. and all over the place. Yeah. Because I know Alan's found absolutely loads of photos of it, just all, all of them down the line, which is probably what's actually saved yes. the motion, I've got to say. Yes. So you're talking there about Alan, aren't you? He's a, a volunteer at the rowing. He's actually produced a book, hasn't he, about yep. the history of, of your locomotive, which is absolutely fantastic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he's done a little, little quick 40-page book, but it's also managed to find a load of photos from when it was at BR, at Dagenham, 
and also some while it's been at the North North and he's basically collated all these photos into a nice book which he's open to expand on as we progress the restoration as well. So he's done a limited run on that but I think we'll put a link in the description uh, for that if anybody wants to contact him to, to purchase the book but uh, yeah. It's yeah. great, isn't it? So fantastic. Well done for you and your dad and, and your granddad for all the hard work that you're putting into this. And it's fantastic to see it progressing so well. So hopefully it won't be long until it's running. Oh, it'll be fantastic, won't it? So brilliant. Thank you, Andrew. Excellent stuff. So last uh, Thursday, I think it was, uh, with the 09 uh, return to the Seven Valley Railway after being here on hire um, for our Polar Express. So our thanks to our friends at Seven Valley for the, the loan of that engine. But when the O-Line left, the TT, this TTA wagon arrive so this is our latest wagon that we've got on uh, the railway yeah, looks fine doesn't it it's in, in really good condition uh, and what we'll use this for is not only will it be used uh, in our demonstration freights but will be used as a water tank uh, at polar uh, so we can re uh, refill the steam locomotive with water in between journeys so it'll be a really useful acquisition to the railway um, it looks lovely but unfortunately it wasn't full of aviation fuel so it's empty in there but yes so it's just come uh, we're just working checking over giving it a fitness to run test to make sure it's okay to use but we're really excited by having it um, and yeah see it in later updates right so it's about time we gave you an update on the progress of our bso so i'm with ben again now and would you like to walk through the bso and show the viewers what progress we've been made yeah we'll go take a walk and uh, see what's been going on okay great So we're now inside the passenger seating area of the BSO. As you can see, it looks a lot different uh, from when we were last in here. Um, so the bar's been installed, um, as you can see behind me. Uh, progress is being made on that at the minute. Uh, so what we've done in the BSO, as some of you eagle-eyed viewers may be able to tell, is we've actually removed a bay of seating from the end. Uh, so we've installed a bar, so that'll be used during special events uh, and during our fish and chip trains. Uh, just something a little bit extra for our passengers. And then here we can see seats starting to be installed. Now these aren't permanent. Uh, the team have just been playing around a little bit to make sure the uh, supports for the seats are all in the right place. These will all be coming back out in the next few weeks and getting painted up uh, when the weather warms up a little bit. And then all the seats, all the cushions will be installed. And this area will be pretty much done. Just needs a good tidy up. A few touch up areas uh, are needed, you know, with a bit of paint. And uh, yeah, we'll be well on our way to welcoming passengers on board the BSO. Well, we're back outside uh, now and I'm with Ben. And Ben, this is your latest project. Uh, this yes. is your ventilated van, isn't it? And, uh, and at the moment it's very well <laughs> ventilated, isn't it? But could you just give us a little bit about what, you, what you've been up to? Yeah, so I purchased the van uh, around two years ago now. Uh, and all the all the wood was rotten uh, and I sort of just purchased it as a bit of a project no real plans with it what to do after um, but as you can see over here uh, so uh, all the wood's been stripped off the floor's been taken out uh, as is the roof and we're just left with a couple of uh, key panels uh, so we're starting to paint this end over here and then we'll be painting the corrugated end at that end uh, and just sort of working up um, so yeah, it's going to be a good little project to keep working on. I'm sure it is, isn't it? And you've had the uh, vacuum yes. discs off, haven't you? So we've just, cylinders. Uh, we've just done the vacuum cylinder, that's just been overhauled. Uh, so over the next few months we're going to be needle gunning the uh, underframe, uh, everything uh, on the chassis, and then we'll be starting to fit the brake system back up again, uh, right. which is perfect for our line. Uh, having more vac fitted wagons just means we've got um, extra uh, vehicles to use on our demonstration freight trains and also on our uh, works trains if required. It, it, well, yes, absolutely. That you know, we, we can't have enough vans, can we, and, and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So, yeah. So, uh, are you planning to use it? Put anything in it for yourself, or I'm not too sure yet. I, a, a model railway would be fantastic, a model railway would be, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Be but, great, yeah. uh, no, no plans as of yet. Uh, I think we'll get the uh, the body sides on first and yeah. uh, and see where we go from there. So yeah, it's ideal, isn't it? So yeah, well, best of luck, and we'll keep up to date with how you're working on it. You thank know. you, so, Yeah, all right, thank, thank you. you. Hello, Chris. I'm back with you again on another issue of uh, Railway Roundup. And what's what's been going on here? There's uh, a lot of work. Yeah, good to see you, Rich. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. I don't think we've yeah, done one since no. uh, since uh, before Christmas. Uh, yeah, we, we're now in the rear yard, as we call it, and we're just doing a, 
a, I suppose, a new temporary building for to renovate the tram. Um, the guys obviously are working outside on the tram um, in clement weather. You can see we've in the background we've got some tarpaulings over the tram, but um, our original building that, that stood here was taken down about eight years back, I think it was now, and we never got round to putting anything else up. So um, uh, we decided to put a temporary building so to ease. Um, Doing the renovation and and the and the tram obviously you know, as you you know has been left in all weathers hasn't it we're we're restoring it we're looking for that boiler put it in we don't want it to start deteriorating straight away do absolutely we? absolutely you know I mean the, the the view is we which we've got to make a decision as an organisation moving forward whether we um, whether we put a permanent building back in here or we move it somewhere else on the on the layout so to speak um, you know that's up for discussion. Um, so that we can we can do that and then eventually get round to to building a new building. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, those restoring the tram will be very grateful for you to have it be undercover, aren't they? Uh, it? I, I hope they will be. <laughs> yes, yeah. Rich, I yeah. hope they will be. Yeah. Um, our cameraman being one of them, yeah. I have to say. Uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it is a temporary structure. Um, you've just asked me the question prior to coming on. Uh, could it be made a bit more permanent? Uh, I think we possibly could go over to to a tin base, whether it's a more modern um, uh, uh, roofing system or, or traditional system, we could yeah. possibly do that. Um, it hasn't been made in the instance that way to do it, but we could probably do a bit of reworking on it. But as I said, we, we need to have the discussion as to whether we're going to have it here or we're yeah, going to put it somewhere or, or else, else on, the, on the system. Yeah. So, yeah. But, you've, but you've, yeah. you know, I'm impressed coming here. There's a lot's happened since... Last Sunday, last week, you know, so you're progressing very well. We, we've had a very good, uh, a very good uh, week or so at it. Yeah, I um, the midweek midweek guys have been in. They were in Thursday. I came up, and uh, we did a bit of work um, getting the wall plates up on the back wall, um, and then really sun uh, yesterday, Saturday, um, we got all the framework up where we are now with it. So uh, yeah, um, there's a bit more framework to do. Um, and then we can, um, we're going to use uh, clear tarpaulin, right. um, just so we can get plenty of light in. But yeah. I said the main thing is to keep the weather off yes, be, while the guys are working it, on so it. Yeah. But yeah, so oh, excellent. Well, mm. looking forward to coming back and seeing Opro because you, you're moving really fast for you. So it's, it is. Yeah, yeah, we're hoping um, perhaps by the end of uh, this time next week um, that it's, it may well be finished. Brilliant. Um, which will be really Brilliant. good. We'll yeah. make a massive yeah. difference. Massive difference yeah. to do that. So, okay. Thanks very much, Chris. Thank you, Thank Richard. You. So we talked about the steam tram on the narrow gauge railway. This is the other locomotive that uh, the railway uh, has with it. It's privately owned, but it's a, a Ruston diesel. It's had uh, quite a history. Uh, it's been up in Scotland, I think, at the Scapa Flow uh, Museum. It came from there, uh, but the present owner has had it at the railway for a few years and has been restoring it. Uh, its restoration is uh, nearly complete, we hope. Uh, that it will be ready this year and yes we're looking forward to having this running on our narrow gauge railway as well we will run it in addition to the uh, steam tram uh, and it will be really useful a bit of variation and when we're having our diesel galas and that it'll be an extra attraction for people to come and see so very grateful for the current owner to allow us to come into the restoration tent and just show you what it is uh, because i think it's been here for quite a while but it's been hidden so this is it this is the new rushton diesel that we've got Dave and myself are now in the yard at uh, Spring Village and unfortunately, Dave, we've had a bit of bad news yes. regarding the pacer, haven't we? We've What's... had some unwelcome visitors, um, smashed a door, gained entry to the unit, um, broken one of the cab door windows, uh, slash seats, set off fire extinguishers. I suppose, in a way, it's lucky there's nothing worse than that. Um, but I'd say, unfortunately, annoying all the time. It seems to be happening reasonably often, shall we yes. say, amongst along heritage railways now. Unfortunately, um, as I say it's going to cost for the you know money and time to repair. Yes. You know, and we've um, we've spent time in here this today, haven't we? We you know, have clean, yes. sweeping up the glass yes, and, and so, cleaning uh, everything out. Um, yeah, and we've had windows shot out previously, haven't we? With yep. air rifles, and we we've got fencing, and we've got do our best with precautions, but it, it's very difficult to keep people out who yes, are intent on getting in yes, yes. but um, you know <laughs> when we first got the news we didn't know what to expect but it's not as bad as we could have had so yeah let's look on the bright side yes. 
So, uh, but I suppose it'll be out of action now for a, for a while, won't it? It until... is. Well, this one was due for some repairs anyway. Um, we'll be using our 142 unit um, in the, during the season, um, say until this one's fixed and been uh, serviced and back in use. Yeah, we back say. in use. And we have got a pace day lined up on uh, June the 9th. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> fingers crossed. Uh, be in there but again like you say it takes money away from other projects it that we had yeah, and it takes and manpower. time and manpower yep. isn't it yeah we've got lots it's not as if we have we're twiddling our thumbs here so yeah it's unfortunate but uh, yes. as I say we'll so keep you up to date is. with the progress okay so I'm stood next to Sentinel Sentinel number 11 Sentinel steam engine and it's been shunted uh, around the yard today and it's in what's called our departure lounge because by the time you see this video the Sentinel will have left Telford steam rally and gone on higher to our friends at Chase Water. So I think it's going next week at some stage. Uh, yep, hopefully it'll be used uh, and they'll get a lot of enjoyment out of it. So nice engine and we're saying goodbye to the Sentinel from Telford. Right, well, we've come in outside uh, from the wind for a bit and we're in the Mark II, one of our Mark II coaches and I'm with Marion here. Hiya, Marion. Hello. And your job at the moment, isn't it, is, is to cleaning... Clean of the, the debris from the, the Polar Express. From the Polar Express, isn't it? Yeah. And, the, and the cleaning, you've got yourself a good cleaning gang yes, in here. Yes, yeah. Yes, we've still, got, we've still got the decoration. Yep. So what does, what does the, the, the sort of clear up right. after Polar entail right. in the coaches? All the seats we lift, clean underneath them, all the crumbs from the cookies, um, sometimes coffee stains, chocolate stains, and we have to clean all that down as well hoover the floor, sweep the floor, depending on... This one is all vinyl. Some of them are half and half, which makes mm -hmm. it even more interesting to try and get them clean. Um, we've moved all the decorations into Coach 1, which we won't be using this mm -hmm. season. This one is one that's going to be used as a running stock, and we've got another one that will be used as well. The garlands are staying up until Easter, um, when we're doing... Or just after Easter, when we've got an event on, and they've been asked to be left in right. situ, so that's why they're still up. Um, and other than that, it's and cleaning the windows and at some point, hopefully getting the outsides cleaned as well. But that's not my domain. No, no. <laughs> and it's a totally unglamorous job, it is, Marion, isn't yes. it? But it's vital, it's isn't vital. it? It's vital, yeah. And it's yes. absolutely important. So yeah. you do a fantastic yes. job. Yeah. You've got a great gang here. We've yeah. got more yes. people that yeah. are coming in because, uh, you know... The more the merrier because uh, then it, you do a little bit and don't feel that it's, you're swamped by it. <laughs> and, and I think there's been times, hasn't yeah. there, where it's, it's just yeah. been you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Yeah. we're grateful for everybody yeah. else who's helping. Yes, yeah. very much so. so. So this coach will be used in the for the, in the running, season, in for the, the running season, season yes, as, as, with another, yeah. Running so, coach. Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's an ongoing job in the season as it well, is, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, in between on, each yeah. run or at least once a month if or once a fortnight to come down, but I try and do it every week if I can. Yeah. Just have a sweep through and a tidy up. Yeah. Make sure everything's and there's no repairs that need to be done. Well, that's a, that's a relief, isn't it? Yeah. If, if we if we you know keep on top of it, like you yes. say. Well, this is what this is what the passengers it's, see, yes, isn't it? it, it is their so it's in, yeah, absolutely. Yes. So it's very important, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yes. And anything unusual been left behind this year? From... Uh, well, shoes yesterday. One pair and one a pair odd of shoes. one. Yeah, yeah, a pair of trainers and an odd shoe. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? <laughs> Not that quite sure left... how they got left. Someone's yes. left with one yeah. shoe. Yes, yeah. it is. Pens, but... pens and pencils is quite a normal thing. Yeah. But um, hats, hats and things. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, crumbs of big chunks of cookies that are like yeah. thrown under the seats. And yeah. But, uh, well. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, random things. Yeah, but can't thank you enough for, for no what problem. you're doing. It's a fantastic job. So lovely. Thank you. So we'll finish today's episode. I'm stood here on, on Rusty, uh, another Ruston diesel loco, which unfortunately uh, is out of service at the moment for repairs to the engine. So I hope you've enjoyed that uh, look at what all the things that are going on at Telford Steam Railway uh, this time. My thanks to Joshua behind the camera for doing his fantastic film work and editing this into a brilliant video. And to all the volunteers that you've seen on the video today, my thanks to them because they're all doing a fantastic job uh, helping with the railway. So, and we'll see you on the next time. So please like and subscribe uh, to the video. It all really helps us um, and, and gets our name out there. And we're really grateful for you for watching and following us. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time.